um, the coordinate system. And that's completely separate of the fact that uh, we usually want to assign the origin to the opposite charge to the one we're looking at. It's kind of interesting that there's multiple reasons sometimes for using a particular coordinate system. Nothing is ever set in stone. So our electric force relationship looks the same. Two subtle differences. First of all, I'm going to expand these out. Now we have Q1 and we have Q2. And the distance of separation is now negative 11 instead of negative 16. I left the minus sign in here um, for a reason. We need the I direction. That minus sign helps reconcile the fact that um, the electric force in this orientation is negative, is pointing toward the origin. This one was in my mind when we first did the first example. So I was just uh, thinking a little too far ahead. It's always scary when you think. Okay, so we could do that calculation, and you know, we're a little bit farther out, so we would expect all things being equal that the interactions would be weaker, certainly. Well, how much weaker? Negative 8, negative 38, plus 10 to the 19. What's that? We, we, we dropped uh, 6 order, or 5 order of magnitude per square inch. Yeah, so it's probably about 10, yeah. It's going to be about, give or take, about 10 orders of magnitude different. Relationship really help us see it. Okay, so we plug in our numbers, we're going to get probably 10 orders of magnitude different than our previous example. So I make it around 10 to the negative. <coughs> give or take. Mm -hmm. So what, what does it give for us? Give us for a number. 9.23 times mm -hmm. 10 to the negative 8. Okay, so almost 10 to the negative 7. It's a negative. Now, again, we can make some very broad interpretations here, which are never a bad thing, even though they're not now related to the technical calculation aspect of the problem. First of all, the atomic interactions that hold the atom together, if you will, the protons and the electrons, are much smaller than what's going on in the nucleus itself. Those interactions are much, much more intense. Which kind of explains something on a very, very, obvi hopefully obvious, simple level. We can detonate TNT or gunpowder and generate a certain amount of energy, a relatively intense amount of energy, right? We can, we can knock down a federal building or something, I guess. Not to imply that's a good thing. I'm not making a lie to that. If you're from Oklahoma City, I apologize. But I'm just saying, or I guess even worse, um, I'm just saying, right? There's a certain amount of energy involved. However, that pales in comparison to the type of energies for the same quantities of substance that you can generate if you can tap into nuclear interactions because of the intensities of the interactions involved. Forget about E equals MC squared. Just, just by identifying how, you know, the difference between 10 to the negative 7 and 1,000 tells you something about how you might be able to tap into much larger amounts of energy if you figure out how to get it. It's just crazy stuff. Yeah. But you just sort of see. Now, that, and that's the difference between chemical processes and what we call nuclear. I think it's very obvious to be illuminated sort of look at how these compare. So, so there we go. We got a number that's 10 orders of magnitude smaller than the previous case. Now let's look at the gravitational interaction. Now the cool thing about this, well again, as a calculation goes, we've got everything set up, so we just have to change the numbers. But We 
gets even crazier because the electron has significantly less mass than the protein would have had. So right off the bat, all other things being equal, this gravitational force is going to be now, all other things being equal, ridiculously small, at least by four orders of magnitude or three orders of magnitude, than uh, the previous situation. So it tails off because of the uh, participants involved. And then we also have this order of ten orders of magnitude because of the distance of separation. So our calculation will... What's that? <coughs> is it the mass too? Yes, this is the mass of the proton and the mass of M2. So is, yeah, I'm sorry, that. it's right. It's yeah. right. I, I so wish we didn't have these podiums and I had an extra five, I mean two, dry marker boards. When I've been in rooms that have them all around, I, I literally covered the entire wall in the course of the class. So, I don't know, we can get a number for that and you can help me with that number. Negative 4 can go 6 times 10 to the negative 47. I left out my I over here. Uh, you know why I left out my I, right? Because there's no I in team. Or class. But the reason physics, physics is working well is that there is an I in physics. We studied the I last term. <laughs> yes, we did. <laughs> Twice. Even. We covered two I's last quarter. Even the naked mole rat eye, I'm pretty sure. Yes, we did, and optics of the eye. If you came from me, you should probably get to talk about the optics of the eye, but I like to use that as a quintessential two-way system. Okay, so now we have, what did you say, negative 47? Gee, yeah, I can't remember. Negative 47 newtons in the eye direction. Again, it's negative because it's still attractive. So can't even make this sucker to scale, but it would look something like that, right? Now, this apparent disparity between gravitation and electrical interaction becomes even more significant when you start looking at um, how a proton and an electron might interact, which is sort of much closer to our scale. Nuclear is much more out there unless you're in a very specialized facility. Let's get rid of these ones down. And now if we compare the magnitudes, we get 9.23 times 10 to the negative 8. That's still significantly smaller than before. And now we have 4.06 times 10 to the negative 47. We have 2.27 times 10 to the 39. Did I screw something up somewhere? I thought somebody said something. Oh, you mean this answer? Yeah. Right. Okay, I was thinking, did I miscalculate it? Okay. I didn't calculate it all. You guys did. So 2.27 2. 2. times 10 to the negative uh, positive, 39. positive 39. Five, I'm sorry, positive 39. 39? So it's okay. roughly. 2 times 10 to the third bigger, bigger, right? Yeah. A factor of 2 times 10 to the third. Yeah, so the disparity, 10 to the 40th power almost. So now you start looking how the disparity of gravity with compared to force interaction, any chemical process, any atomic process, you completely ignore gravity because there's literally no so. so that actually kind of puts the mole in a hole. It's so small. Right? Sorry. Okay, so good time to take a break now or I'll forget to like 11.5. Let's take a break now and then we'll extend this a couple of different ways. Three of them. 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 Three of them.